do the producers just like come to you and be like, Hey, like you need to like go and fight with this other person. They do to the other cast members. One producer came to me one time and said, you need to say this on camera. And I said, no, I don't. It ain't my problem. It's your problem. And he was like, no, you need, I said, no, you need me to say this. <laughs> now, if you ask politely, I will consider saying it because I like you. But yeah. please don't ever tell me what to say on camera. Hey, this is Chad Namiro. And I'm Kelly Namiro. Welcome to the Balancing Chaos Podcast. A lifestyle podcast where we will interview guests about wellness, business, and just about everything in between. Our goal is to help you develop a lifestyle that promotes health, wholeness, and success. Through our conversations, we hope to inspire you to live a beautiful, full, and joyful life as you navigate balancing the chaos. We hope you enjoy. So she's not your typical Southern belle. Leanne Locken has a strong, spirited attitude and is no stranger to the spotlight. She grew up on the carnival circuit, which we are super excited to dig into, landed in the top 10 in the 1989 Miss USA pageant, and has appeared in several television shows and now leads efforts for many charitable organizations in Dallas and travels the world. She gained a lot of nobility in her roles on in TV on Big Reach Texas, Real Housewives of Dallas, and she's got the look. Thank you so much for joining us, Leanne. We are so excited to be here with you today. I am happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, your coffee cup looks so good. I hope there's Thank wine you. in that. I hope there's <laughs> wine in that. <laughs> Hot water with lemon. I'm like a, like a boring old gal. What? Yeah, she doesn't drink much wine anymore. It's pretty boring for me. <laughs> oh, that's so though. sad. Yeah, you, you gotta keep it spicy. Drink. You gotta keep it spicy. I'm going out to dinner with my girlfriends after this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it. do you have a coffee cup with wine in it then? As we're recording. That, no, because I um I just took a, a muscle relaxer. I, I strained my uh, back today. So um oh. you don't want to mix. <laughs> Not yet. I want to be on the way home before I start mixing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. This is good. This is a great place to start. What did you do to your back today? Um, your I tweaked it. Uh, I I tweaked it throwing axes. Mm. Wait, did you go to one of those like places? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. My That's shoulder fun. was hurting when I went in. And so I had two margaritas and then it stopped hurting. So I yeah. just threw even harder and then it really hurt. The competitive nature took over and, you know. It's just, it's a Texas thing, man. I hear you. You know, we're like bulls. Don't mess with us. I like literally love the direction that this started. And this is fantastic. <laughs> Those axe throwing things are oddly fun. I mean, never done it. They, Leanne so already fun. is a good time. <laughs> the axes weigh a little more than you think, though. So it's, you know. Yeah. Makes you feel like you're really in battle, you know? <laughs> I was a two-hander the whole time. Yeah, that's safe. That's safe. So did you grow up in Dallas? Tell us a little bit about your upbringing. No, I, uh, my grandparents raised me in Houston. Okay. And um, my and family's I, from there too. Yeah. I, I love, I loved growing up in Houston. I was Miss Houston USA. I got into pageants there. I got into modeling there. Mm -hmm. Um, I loved Houston and then, uh, ended up in Dallas about 30 years. I'm not really good with time. My philosophy is, you know, time, time, go away. Um, (laughs) but about 30 years ago, I ended up here via Chicago, LA, Miami, you know, all all over, okay. uh, New York. So I'm I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be back in Texas. Yeah. Um, there's nothing. If you're a Texan, there's nothing like the warmth of someone just saying hello to you that does not know you. Oh yeah. I mean, I feel like the value that Texans, because again, a lot of my family still lives down there, like place on making somebody else feel at home and like making somebody else feel seen is, uh, is very big and like family and all of that is such a value down there. So I I love it. Southern values for sure. Yes. Until you Uh, get on housewives. (laughs) So so we want to definitely dive into kind of what the housewives kind of mentality was and how that probably put pressure on your mental health. But before we do that, talk to us about growing up in Houston, your grandparents raised you. So you not your parents. Um, and oh. Were they the ones that had you kind of on the carnival scene? How did that kind of all start? Right. So my grandmother took me in when I was three, which allowed my mother to go do her thing and um <laughs> she ended up marrying somebody on the carnival circuit. You know, my mom's been married 
multiple times. <laughs> so the first one, David Locken, who I still carry his last name, um, he owned rides and he, he was married to my mom the longest, the most of my maturing ages, you know, from mm -hmm. childhood to like 13 or 14. Um, so he's the one that I really think of when I think of dad. You know, right. yeah. Um, but yes, oh, because I was with my grandparents and my mom wanted to see me. Literally, would go and spend the entire summer with my mom, traveling all over the United States. We would tear down Sunday night, leave out Monday morning, get to the next town by Tuesday or Wednesday, set up Wednesday night, and then we'd be open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's fun. and yet like animals and and no rocks. no no that's a circus. I mean, I will say this, though, you know, when back in the day, because y'all are young, but back in the day when I started on the carnival, we had Siamese, we still had Siamese twins behind glass. And, oh. yeah. you know, we did Gorilla Girl, which I still hated it. I had to do once. I hated it. <laughs> I was so much better at being like, you know, blow up the balloons in the back or, yeah. you know, let the boa constrictor wrap around me a couple of times. <laughs> it was that was so much easier. Did you do you like the games and stuff like that? Like where? Oh yeah, I when I started when I was three. Yeah, and then by the time I was um, eleven, I bought my first game. We called them joints because they were stick made of stick joints. And so I bought my first joint, which was a tip up the coke, uh -huh. at eleven on the back of a popcorn box, and, and I started having people work for me and continue to buy more games and uh, retired at sixteen. Your first entrepreneurial career. move. Yeah. I love it. That's awesome. Your, your husband seems so confused. No, just what, tell, tell us more about like that life. And like, I think, he, we, I think and we were, when so we were both talking about it, like what were the people like that you came into contact with? Like, were there like any, like, cut, I, I don't want to say creeps, but like nefarious, nefarious people. Oh yeah. But that both worked for the show and that, visited the show i mean you know look you're a carny it's a cash business you're yeah. constantly traveling no one knows where you are no one knows what your real name is yeah everything you need is done in cash so of course we had some nefarious characters working for us uh i remember one uh we called him animal he couldn't read or write uh rumor was that he had killed his whole family who knows if that was true <laughs> Uh, but my mom was always very kind to him. And because of that, he was, he I was like that. my watchdog. Yeah. Like if yeah. anybody yeah. ever like came for me, uh, you know, he was there. Animal uh, was all over. It. Animal was in for it. Yeah. Um, and it was so funny, you know, I don't, I don't know how okay this is, but I just remember like, he was always so dirty and just like, you know, I mean, he, he managed the rides. So he was mm -hmm. always tooling with stuff but i gotta tell you we would go to towns and he would look at like the moms and the moms would be like oh and i'm like i'm so confused i like as a child i did not get that you know and yeah. then on the flip side there would be times when um like one time i had a guy who had escaped from a an insane asylum and was stalking me the whole weekend Wow. Yeah, it was, I was that time I was genuinely scared. Like I remember running to my trailer, screaming and crying and people trying to follow me and calm me down. And I was like, no, I, I, I don't want to go back out there. Like, yeah, that's scary for sure. I mean, remember, I'm like nine, 10. Yeah. 11. yeah you're a little girl. There's yeah. probably a lot of people in and out, right? Isn't the, the labor like constantly shifting? Yeah. 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 Most of the time we have our locals to work the joints and okay. we manage the rides and the con food concessions. So, okay. yeah. So I heard you on another podcast, talk a little bit about like games of chance versus games of, of skill. What? skill. Yeah. So what get, can you give us like, just for the people who are going to their next carnival, can you give us an example of like one of each? <laughs> sure, but it's not going to help them. Um, so games of chance are basically like dime toss or, um, What's another one? Oh, the water balloon where you shoot the water in the clown's mouth. I mean, there's mm. a little skill there, but honestly, no. Yeah. Games, g genuine games of skill are knocking over the milk cartons, uh, mm. basketball, shooting out the star, right? Uh, climbing the ladder. I can do that real easy. Yeah. Um, so people should go for know, the games of skill. 
Well, but here's the thing. You should make, I'm going to so get in trouble for this. You <laughs> should make the carny show you how to do it at least three times. Because you'll pick up something new each time you watch them. Ooh. And, and then you'll know what, they'll tell you. They'll tell you what the shtick is because they know you still can't do it. You okay. know, that's the thing about it. You got to remember, like, this is your job. We do this like a hundred times a night. So yeah. I remember this year I went to the carnival to the state fair of Texas and this poor girl they had hired to blow up balloons had like multiple band-aids on each finger. And I was like, Oh, bless her heart. I go, honey, can I show you how to do that? You just pinch the end of the balloon, wrap it around, squeeze and pull through. And she was like, wait, wait, Will you do that again? And I'm like, <laughs> sure. Let me let me show you real slow, and I'll teach you how to do this, and you, you'll, you'll alleviate all the band aids. <laughs> Don't injure yourself. So when you go to these <laughs> these carnivals, you're just destroying your entire family at every game. They prefer I don't play. I know the owner. I grew up with her. Um, you're banned yeah, in five they... states for milk <laughs> milk carton toss. <laughs> Pretty much all I got to do is do one game of skill, and it's it's obvious <laughs> uh, that's fascinating so talk to us a little bit about how maybe that lifestyle growing up did that set you up at all to want to like because you know like people are watching you whether it's like what you talked about with the boa constrictor did that like set you up at all to want to do acting or do modeling no no not okay. at all I so mean, how did you get into it, that how did i get into modeling uh so i the got pageant. into modeling pageants right yeah. so my very first boyfriend um who lived across the street wanted to get into photography so he took some pictures of me and unbeknownst to me sent them into the miss houston usa pageant so then i got this thing in the mail that was like hey you've been accepted to compete for miss houston usa and i was like i didn't submit anything so then i was telling him you know i was like this is so weird and he was like well i submitted you i really think you should do it you know yeah. so i did pageants that was my first experience at pageants i think i placed in the top 15 my very first time i was 17 they invite all of the top 15 to go to miss texas i made it to top 15 in texas mm -hmm. and then between then and coming back i was um first runner up at miss houston Went back to Miss Texas, first runner up at Miss Texas. Came back, won Houston, went back. I was second or third runner up. And then my mother, who had lupus, still has lupus, mm -hmm. uh, got very sick and she was living in Arizona. So I went to Arizona to take care of her. And she was like, please don't give up on your dreams to go to Miss USA. So I competed in Arizona, which, oh, bl I mean, bless their hearts. I mean, <laughs> seriously. I mean, it was like, that was, that was carny control. I mean, it really wasn't fair. It was like taking candy from a baby. And I, and I feel bad about it because the sister was supposed to crown her younger sister who ended up being my first runner up. And then you won. Yeah. That's amazing. So, I mean, well, they're just not as, I feel like, like Texas is like known for dude debutantes and the pageants. Like that's the, that's the breed down there. Hardcore training. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can, I can float downstairs without ever looking at a step. Yeah. I mean, that's just, you know, pageants taught me presence. They taught me how to do my makeup and my hair. They taught mm -hmm. me how to speak with eloquence. Mm -hmm. uh, they taught me when to speak and when not to speak. They taught me that I don't have to answer every question, but if I do, I should always include the question in my answer. That was the basis for being trained to be on reality TV, really genuinely. Yeah. yeah. And then from pageants, I got into modeling. Modeling led to acting. Acting led to television. So, mm -hmm. you know, like I've I've been in, I was in Miss Congeniality with Sandra Bullock. I played yeah. Faith Dunaway's daughter in Rain. Um, and, you know, I just, I, for me, if I get into something and I like it, it's that competitive nature that's like, I want to be the best. I taught myself ear prompter and teleprompter. Oh, and wow. I'm that's beyond, hard work. I am beyond proficient at both. That's incredible. <laughs> that Did you, you never had to use a teleprompter in reality, did you? Yeah. Uh, she's got the look. Which, oh, you did? 
Yeah, I mean, and I'd already been anchoring the news in Plano at that point. So I was like, oh, teleprompter, this is great. And I was with, um, oh, what is her name? She's, su she's super sweet. She was married to um, the DJ in New York that's crazy. Uh <laughs> Has all the the has the strippers come on his podcast? He got kicked off the podcast, mm -hmm. uh, kicked off radio, and now he's on Sirius XM. I don't know. I was gonna say Ben. Oh, my husband Howard, was Stern. Stern. Howard Stern. Yes, Howard Stern. It was Howard, it was Howard Stern's wife that I had to do this little stand up uh, challenge with. Yeah, and it was funny because at by that point in the reality program, you know, shooting. I'd already realized that I was going to be the hardest one challenge period at the end because I don't back down, you yeah. know? So no matter what <clears throat> I faced, I was like, still going to make it good, babe. It's still going to be the best <laughs> I've ever seen. And when we were doing that teleprompter scene, the teleprompter went black and I just kept right on going and talking. Cause I thought that was like their trick to get me. Yeah. And we, someone yelled cut and she was like, Beth, and she was like, Beth's turn. And she was like, um, uh, oh my God, you're really good. And I was like, well, wasn't that the trick? And she was like, no, it really went black. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, sure. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Take, take me into, into a day in the life of, of pageanting. I, I, the frame of reference, I wrote the- What, before I we had. talked about reality TV? Yeah. Okay. It's just that whole world has fascinated me and I know almost nothing about it. I think pretty much the context I have is miscongeniality. So- Yeah. Well, and that's <laughs> not, please don't use that as a context. Like, uh, right. You, the world, the world of pageantry goes like this. You, uh, you're normally under 20, 21. Yeah. So if, if you're old enough, if you're not in school, you have a job. If you're in school, you go to school. After that, you go to the gym for three or four hours. Wow. Um, you have hardcore trainers. I had the Houston Police Department trainer train me. You do spend days working on interview questions. Ask me a question and I'll give you the pageant answer. What's, what's the biggest world problem right now? I think the biggest problem in the world today, see how I incorporated that back in my answer? <laughs> I think the biggest problem in the world today is lack of communication, lack of respect for one another, and the deterioration of family units. Because I think no one's raising our young. And I think that without control and guidance, we're going to get what we get. And that's why we are where we are. The community is falling apart because no one's putting time and energy into them. And that's what I think is wrong. Very good. <laughs> I love it. That I was agree. fantastic. We would train for like, you know, the stupid answers that are questions that everybody gets like, you know, if you could put three things in a time capsule, what would they be and why? And I'd be like, well, I would put the law of the land because I believe that without law, we'll never make it. I would put the Bible because I believe the word of God gives hope to continue through hard times. And um, well, I guess I'd put a can of Pepsi since it's the choice of the next generation. See, now, <laughs> remember that was back when Pepsi had just come out and that was their big campaign. So you would train like that. You'd go to the gym, you go to school or class. And then are you like practicing like with the gowns on and like with the makeup on or is so that walking, like saved? Yeah, okay, no, okay. walking, I mean, makeup you do every day for school or work. So, okay. you know, and hair, oh my God. I can't even tell you how many, I mean, I could tease, I could back comb some hair. <laughs> I'm surprised my hair didn't touch the clouds. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you just perfected everything you did. And then you, you know, at night you lived your regular life. You yeah. watch TV or you still Whatever. had to be current on top, top topics, you know? Right. So. But you had fun with it, it sounds like. Oh gosh, I actually really did have fun with pageants. I mean, pageants really were a way of taking the girl who grew up on a carnival and had no etiquette, no formal training, no guidance, and really turned me into someone who could, well, I met Prince Charles at the Sesquicentennial of Texas and shook his hand. I mean, you know, it- It transformed pageants, you. It pageants transformed me. I'm transformed by everything I do if I really put my time and energy into it. Mm. The carnival transformed me in, I was never allowed to be shy or uh, quiet. Yeah. You know, ask every person that goes by. Every person. Hi, do you like to play? Hi, do you like to play? Hi, do you like to play? 
Yeah. And if, if some if a guy was standing and talking a little too long, my mom would walk behind him and say, "You can't stay if you don't play." I think that have his money. Like it, it's so true though. Like every experience that you have in life creates the person that you are today. And so like that, all of that brought you to reality TV. And so tell us a little bit about, you know, how that all began for you, the shows you were on. um, Did you watch reality TV before you were cast? Like how did that kind of process play out? I never watched reality TV. I mean, I know there was the real world and I'd heard about, you know, (laughs) VJs and MTV DJs and all that. In my time off, I used television as an escape. So I would watch Fantasy Island and, you know, The Love Boat. And, you know, I was I was a silly little girl when I was modeling at the agency. I got the call to be on She's Got the Look. You know, huge casting companies know what they're doing. They do pre-screening, they find you, they ask you if you would do this, they set you up a time, and then they do the, you know, what I call news casting call, which is they put it on the news and whoever shows up, shows up. Right. Yeah. So then they get the videos of those long lines. (laughs) Yeah. What what was the show about? Uh, It was a modeling show. Okay. Yeah, modeling competition for women over 35. Okay. And then you did Big Big Rich Texas. Right. Now, I didn't have a contract for Big Rich Texas. So at the time, I was a part of an organization called the Fashionistas, which was a nonprofit organization that promoted and helped finance young designers in their careers. And we've launched some amazing designers here in Dallas. And I was doing that and I wanted an outlet for more publicity for the organization. So I helped get us put on Big Rich Texas. Well, I found out how wrong reality can go on She's Got the Look when they chopped my damn hair off and wouldn't let me look in the mirror. Like (gasps) they chopped it off to here. I remember those shows. I remember like- No mirror, I mean, just- Put you under the thumb. Uh, the monkey who had his way with me and pooped and peed and humped my back. And I mean, <laughs> I, I learned I learned on She's Got the Look that reality competitions were challenging. Yeah. So oh. when we did Big Rich Texas, I didn't really think much of it because I was like, well, this is just me living my life. Well, okay, maybe, maybe not. Because now producers get involved. But because I wasn't hugely a part of the show i didn't experience the cat fights and the you know people coming mm-hmm. for me i didn't get that until real housewives of Dallas. that stuff like i've heard you talk about like on other podcasts i've seen you mention it in interviews do the producers just like come to you and be like hey like you need to like go and fight with this other person they do to the other cast members one producer came to me one time and said you need to say this on camera and i said no i don't it ain't my problem it's your problem and he was like no you need to. i said no you need me to say this <laughs> now, if you ask politely i will consider saying it because i like you yeah. but please don't ever tell me what to say on camera no one how ever much did. of well, it is real reality versus my life Yeah, versus uh, created uh, uh, drama. drama. I will say that it really depends on the cast. Yeah. If you are a woman who has not much going on in your life and you're just bored and you want to be on a reality TV, they are going to script you like crazy because they need you to be the excitement right yeah no no the whatever oh trust me they ain't exciting they're just boring as hell but you know it's a member in the group let's just and so then because the thing about me was i mean even when the president of bravo you know had my phone call to tell me that i was cast on real housewives i was the last one i was the first one they cast and i was the last one they called and sherry levine the president said to me oh you know you're like the little glue that holds this show together so they needed you for sure. And, and she she knew what she was saying and I should have listened a little better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you said like, you know, they'll tell other women to like say, maybe say something to you. Like they didn't tell you that often. Like, do you feel like they like picked a target every season? Did they? <laughs> She's pointing at herself for the listeners. I I, I'm going to watch, uh, to be fair, yeah. I haven't seen an episode yet. I will after, but I wanted to I do was, this first. <laughs> I was legit the target every season because I'm the only one who will give you an authentic reaction. You right. know, listen, if you put baby in a corner, baby's going to fight. 
you know? Yeah. And I, I, you know, and the thing was, remember, even though I had been through pageants, now you're taking me back to my carny days where it's like, okay, you push me. It's like survival. Of the survival first. mode. Totally. Survival mode. Okay. So, and also you have to understand that, you know, as a child, I was also, you know, sexually molested for- I Yes, I've heard this. Over a decade. So for me, I also have PTSD and, you know, some of that. So I have this tendency to go into fight or flight mode. I totally. don't fight. I've never flown in my life. <laughs> I fight. And yeah. especially yeah. then as an adult, being a domestic violence survivor, yeah. um, I can guarantee you the next person that tries to take me down, like I'm gonna take down with me. Like I'm not, yeah. I'm not gonna, I don't back down. You have to remember too, my entire bloodline is Cajun. I'm yeah. the first in my bloodline to be born in Texas. You now give spice. me a cocktail and see how that happens. See what happens, <laughs> yeah. you know? And that's good TV. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately. No, I am. I, you're not kidding. Like I've had yeah. production companies before Real Housewives of Dallas and since bombard me with emails like, you know, we'll do any show you want to do like your reality TV gold. And I'm like, I finally got that when I left Real Housewives and a quarter of a million viewers left with me. Wow. Yeah, that is insane. That's no, that's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's I've heard you, like I said, on other interviews and in other podcasts and stuff, talk about, you know, being a victim of domestic violence and abuse. And I think that that also kind of does get people to feel connected to you in a way, people who have both, been through both, similar things. Yes. Other survivors, mm -hmm. other survivors. And I hear, so, I get so many DMs from people all around the world, all around the world. I got, I remember one time, uh, I got a DM uh, during season two from a woman who said, thank you for talking about your anger and how you're controlling it and your amygdala. She goes, I, I never knew what set my husband off. And I always felt like it was me. And for the first time watching you, I realized it's not me. And I need to find out what his trigger is. And you've made me a better wife and you've wow. made my marriage a stronger marriage. Wow. And for that, Bravo could have done anything they wanted to me because at the end of the day, you know, we're tasked to walk in Jesus's footsteps. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I prefer not to be nailed to a cross if I don't have to, <laughs> but, but if I can suffer to save others, then I make that my task, God. Make I always message. say that, like, make your mess, your message. Like yeah. if you can help other people with the stuff you've gone through, like more power to you. So it's probably a lot about authenticity also. Yeah. Like for me, when I watch reality TV shows, and I'm not the biggest fan, to be honest, because like most you can sense that it's quite staged. It doesn't seem to be authentic, but there usually are characters that are real seem to be genuinely themselves. And those, I think, are what people really gravitate towards. Those uh, are what we call the show carriers. And I can name most of them as yeah. you can too across the Real Housewives. Nene yeah. carried Atlanta for a long time. Bethany carried New York. Yep. Um, I remember when we were first released, uh, Entertainment uh, E Television or Entertainment Tonight or whatever it was, said um, the whole intro to the segment about Real Housewives of Dallas was, uh, move over, Bethany. Look out, Nene. There's a new bee in town. And it was me. So, you know, yeah. I mean, like even in this last, however long we've been on this 30 minutes, like I can tell you're a very authentic person. And like, that's something like really it does. It shows through. My so. mother was a habitual liar and still struggles with it. And for me, um, I base how I can react and how I can connect through authenticity. So a lot of people that like I know, but I'm not connected with, it's usually because they, I find some inauthentic moment in their life, yeah. you know, or in their personality that I just, it's a sign for me to be cautious. I've, I've taken, yeah. it's taken me a long time to, get to, there. to be that quick at it, but you know, now I, I kind of am. Did you ever go to like therapy or anything like that to deal with the trauma? Oh my God. I started therapy when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you the last therapist I saw, uh, and while I was filming, remember, I would see like my therapist twice a week. Oh, like, really? Every week. Oh, yeah. oh, hell yeah. 
I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, you're like in there and you're like, well, so-and-so just said this and now they're going to make it like this and that's not who I am and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, she would always go back to the triangle, you know, which I have my, the drama triangle. I literally have it taped on my wall right here. And it's like, you know, there's the persecutor, there's the rescuer, and there's the victim. And most people will <laughs> run around that triangle playing one or the other. First you persecute, then you become the victim, then you become the rescuer, you know? And it's, yeah. But then there's this outside the triangle and it's just an observer, which means everybody's gonna wanna pull you back into that drama triangle because that's where the action is. Right. You have a choice not to be pulled into it. Yeah. And it took me a long time to get there. It also took me a long time to deal with things with my mom, you know, like finally when my therapist was like, Leanne, you know, well, I, I had to learn that for a lot of my life, I was letting little Leanne run my life. Like if I was getting in a dangerous, you know, if one of the girls was threatening me or we were fighting, I'd let little Leanne out to fight because that bitch is crazy. Yeah. I mean, she'll say and do anything because she's been tortured her whole life and she doesn't care. She's the one who would go hit below the belt. Mm. And so for me, I had to, I had to learn through therapy that I'm an adult now and I don't need her to take care of me. Some of the but behaviors now, like of childhood aren't yes, serving you anymore yes. as an adult. It was a, it was a reaction, a, a, a natural reaction. And I had to slowly incorporate her into my adult life, but make her feel comfortable enough to realize that it's okay. Yeah. I know, I know you think I don't have you, but I have you. And will you trust me? And we're going to grow old together. And so, you know, I, I often would in therapy, I have to stand up and talk to her, you know, <laughs> like, yeah listen, you're not helping me. You know, I, I think that like that inner child stuff, that work that like therapists or like coaches can have you do is some of the most powerful because so many of your subconscious reactions are really rooted in what happened in childhood, whether it was trauma or not, like it, you are, are, you always revert back. And so when you can become conscious of those patterns, you can really change how you show up in your adult life. And so, yeah, I, yeah, I think that's really powerful. And I, I mean, and I gotta say, being able to show up as an adult in your adult life is still something that I would probably guess the mass of America doesn't know that they can do and doesn't do on a regular basis. Totally. They're still people living. They can they're, no, well, but the people are still living automatically based mm -hmm. on the reactions they developed as a child. They're living today. Right. So- I think you can awesome. only you can only perceive me from the perspective of your experience. So if your experience in life hasn't been to the same level as mine, then your perception of me will never be what I truly am. And I can't change it or, or educate you on it because you have to go through it. Totally, totally. And I think that that, that like that really speaks to like, like being able to like put yourself in other people's shoes and like step outside of like, but most people, you're like you said, like most people don't have the capacity to, and, to do or that. the desire or the desire. Yeah. They're happy living the life that they developed and put into a pattern mm -hmm. and they do it every day. And that's why most people are unhappy because they're living this pattern that they created as a child. And because you know? that inner child work is also like very uncomfortable at first. So I think that a lot of people don't want to go there, but yep. once you like dip your toe in and you get wet, it's like, gosh, this is so worth it. So oh my gosh, I, I will tell you the day that my therapist said, you know, Leanne, you're, you're, you're probably old enough that you don't need a mom now. So <laughs> it's okay to just let go. And wait, I can't, what? Like, hold on, really? Like, yeah. she's like, yeah, look at your friends in your life. I have this dear friend, Heidi Dillon. That's my mentor. That's my, I'm, that's who I'm going to dinner with. Yeah. Five minutes. <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, so I, if I have a struggling question, whether it's mental health or, or uh, etiquette or um, any of that, you know, she would be the person I asked, you know? And, Right. And you can mother yourself too. That's like the and one thing can. that I learned through a lot of it. Like you can, you can really mother yourself. You have to date yourself to love yourself and you have to love yourself to mother yourself. Oh, that's good. That's a, that's a, a gold nugget right I there. Like I that. like that. Um, it's, it's uncomfortable for everyone to do these things. 
but then you go and take it and you insert yourself into a reality TV show. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's got to like be 10 times more. One of the most, I'm sure, challenging things on your psyche, your emotions, your personality, your self-worth, all that stuff, I'm sure just gets thrown to the top i I would not i would be miserable i already know (laughs) i even just i mean like there's all that and the 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 cast and the dynamics and etc but what did it bother you just them being in your house all the time did you feel like there's no real separation you know because it's such an intimate place right it's like your home home. yeah so can i tell you this the second i left the show i literally changed i taught myself faux finishing because I wanted to change yeah. the look of my home because I didn't want it to look like the same. I, I totally redid my dining room. I totally redid my back living room. I just totally redid my front living room. Like I don't, I didn't want it to look anything like what it looked like when we were filming. I just didn't want to be reminded of that. I wanted a fresh new, for me, I'm a visual, I'm Gemini. So for me, I'm visual. If it's mm-hmm. clean, I can think if it's cluttered, I'm, frustrated and and get angry but you know yeah i mean i will tell you this yeah for your mental health but those are the people they want on reality shows you know they want to break you they want to break you and i i i would say every year i got broken i remember at the at the reunion andy was asking me something and i said you know and i just sort of went somewhere else which i frequently do anyway uh mentally and i said you know i feel like i'm in a garden and it's been burned to the ground and I know I'm the one who burned it and there's just nothing I can do. Yeah. And until he touched my hand and brought me back to the yeah. conversation, I was somewhere else, mm-hmm. literally just somewhere else realizing that, you know, yeah, I always will be my own worst enemy. Mm-hmm. Always. And I it's, think that's- it's a daily struggle. I struggle with depression. There wasn't a year on that show. I didn't contemplate suicide or threaten it. It put a strain on my marriage. It put a strain on my friendships. At the end of the day, no matter how poorly I was treated, I was still able to help more than one other person. I was able to help a lot of people. And for me, that's That's honestly, yeah, it is. It is. That that's the that's my ultimate goal in life. It's why I do uh, philanthropy. I, I can't take people who sit on the sofa and complain about their world. Get up, do make something. a difference. Yeah, volunteer. It doesn't even cost a dime to be a part of your community. Yeah, you know, and it just it boggles the mind. But you know, most people lead, lead lives of quiet desperation, and that's the reality and the truth. And and that comes from that patterning as a child that they're still using and will use until they die. Hey fam, if you are listening here, then you may be someone who deals with chronic overwhelm, bloating, anxiety, and weight you can't lose, maybe hair loss or skin conditions. If one of those things rings true for you, the Wellness by Kelly Health and Hormones course is available to help you get to the root cause and solve the issue in a way that's sustainable and gives you your lifestyle with lasting results. No more diets or quick fixes, but real health and vitality for the long run. My course runs through everything from what labs to test for to what protocols to implement given what's off in your blood work. We cover a variety of hormonal imbalances and how to heal them, plus the mindset work that you'll have to do to change your habits. If you're ready for an environment where you can learn the tools and truly heal to feel your best, most aligned, light, confident version of you, then this course is for you. If you're feeling called to join the WBK Health and Hormones course, head to the link in the show notes to learn more where you'll get my membership included with your purchase. Two questions. One, what do you feel like you learned from the experience of being on TV? And two, are you happy? Would you ever do it again? Are you happier now that you're not doing it? Okay, well, (laughs) Um, what I learned, I learned so much about myself. If you need to grow, if you really want to learn about yourself, do a real housewives. I mean, (laughs) you will see everything about you and you will be challenged, not just by yourself, but by your cast members and a very large audience. Yeah. Change and reminded to change and reminded (laughs) of your downfalls and your trips and your flips and your breaks. 
And um, so I will say this, I'm very grateful to Bravo for allowing me to really come to where I am today because I wouldn't be here. The girl who started on Real Housewives is not the girl who sits in front of you. Yeah, You know, I'm so much wiser. I'm so much um, more in tune with my world. My world is a happier place, a safer place. My friendships are more honest and real. And my life has genuine power that I don't think I felt that I had before. Right. Would I do Real Housewives again? No, no. <laughs> Would you do TV again, period? I am working next month on starting my own travel show. So I we love start it. filming it next month. And so I consider that reality because it's just me telling you what you can do if you're in a city, you know? Yeah. More educational, but, less people attacking each other. Sounds exactly. Nice. <laughs> I mean, the worst thing that's going to happen is someone's going to try to teach me you know, try to teach me how to talk Cajun or, uh, you know, make something that I'm like, no clue how to make. I mean, literally, I charred brick on my house making a steak for Rich and I one time. <laughs> what is your favorite? Okay, so you started like the whole travel magazine online. What's your favorite place? Like, or maybe give us like top three that you've been to. Oh my gosh, uh, Greece. Lefkada, not not the not the primary cities that most people go to, but go to Lefkada. Yeah. Oh my God, the water is crystal blue, and and the people are so authentic and genuine. And there's so many day beach party clubs that turn into night beach party clubs. <laughs> I mean, I loved Lefkada. I loved it. Broke my foot there, but I loved it. Um, <laughs> uh, where else? I loved Puerto Rico. San Juan oh. is just so authentic and you can, you visually, you see, you know where you are and it's so beautifully inspirational. I could not tell you how, how beautifully inspirational it is. I love my time in Costa Rica. Yeah. I Ooh, tried to get good places. Yeah. I tried to get the monkeys to come down and talk to me, but they were like, ooh, 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 you know, <laughs> they like dogs in the tree. I was a little concerned when I first heard them. I was like, how big are these guys? Uh, but I mean, the places that we've stayed and the, and the people that we've met and the food that we've eaten, the coffee, how it changes from place to place. Uh, yeah. Just such an experience and such a, a great, just such a genuine, uh, grateful experiences to be part of Eternal Traveler magazine. So awesome. in Eternal Traveler magazine, are we telling people like the best hotels to stay at, the best restaurants to eat at, like all of the things so like people have like really good resources? Right. I give them a resource of this is where we stayed and this is what the property looked like. Here are some Amazing. other variations of where to stay. Oh my gosh. If you're going to be in this city, go off property and do this. Like Aruba. I really wanted to go swim with the pigs. I didn't get to do it. So when we go back to Aruba, I'm going to do it. Yeah, we've done that before. It's, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Fun. They yeah. swim very well. They <laughs> totally evolved, you know, yeah. in terms of where they're at. Yeah. They love it's food, fun. so bring snacks. Yeah, you gotta watch your hands though. They'll bite that thing off. Um, sounds, like, sounds like me at a hungry night. <laughs> <laughs> so um love that. We'll link your ma your travel magazine in the show notes. One thing that I want to touch on before we wrap everything up that I think is really important for people to know and like something I'm really passionate about as well is charitable work and giving back to the community and doing what you can to help others because there's no better feeling than nope. than doing that. And so I got to tell you I think that's God's greatest trick is that when <laughs> you when you help others you get juice from it. It's yeah. a good feeling. You go home feeling real good about yourself, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, and I think that's God's trick to get people to keep doing it. And I wish people who didn't feel good about themselves understood. If you don't feel good about yourself, if you're depressed, it's because you're looking in. Look out. Find mm. someone else to help and it will make you feel so much better about your life, you know? Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's like... Uh, there's so much need in every community, in every community, there's need. All you gotta do is volunteer. Pick a, pick a, pick a category, animals, children, uh, old people, yeah. you know, LGBTQ, uh, it, pick a category and go right. volunteer. And you're gonna I... meet volunteers who are gonna tell you about other things that you're gonna get, and they're gonna get you to go do that. Now you made a friend yeah. and you got some stuff to do. And pretty soon you're not sitting on the sofa feeling bad. 
I, I think it's great. I think that like, you, like you said, like you never leave those situations feeling bad. You always li- leave them feeling like lit up from the inside. So did you get started in that from like a really young age? And like, what are your favorite organizations that you're involved in? What causes are you passionate about? Um, it's a about? lot. I'm going to give you my four categories okay. that, uh, that are important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, child um, res- res- sex trafficking, child sex yeah. trafficking. I work with um, unlikely heroes. And uh, I cannot say enough that if we don't start talking about it on a regular basis, we are never going to be able to save our children. Domestic violence. As a survivor, I want women who have allowed themselves, and not just allowed themselves, but women who have found themselves in that situation to realize that you can soar. You can get out of it. You can climb out of it. You can make your own way. You can be your own hero. You need no one to save you. You can, but you got to believe you can and you got to get help. Um, Animals. My little crackheads are down here their little <laughs> leather sofas. Uh, animals, they can't speak for themselves. If you injure an animal in front of me, God bless you. Because <laughs> I will, I will. She'll come for you. <gasps> it, it will not be pretty. It will not be pretty. I do not understand people who throw boiling hot water on animals and puppies. I don't get, I just don't get that. He's right um, there with you. Yeah. So, I mean, literally give me a dark alley. <laughs> yeah i'm worse. good people hurt humans in my opinion yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's inhuman it is yeah. inhuman to harm an animal who cannot speak and only wants to love you that is inhuman um and then lgbtq where i spend most of my time you know it's a community where they accepted me at an early age and i'm never the loudest one there and I'm never the most flamboyant and everybody wants to have a good time and everybody wants to love, yeah. you know? And, um, and I believe in acceptance. If we don't start learning to accept one another, where the hell are we going to end up? Mm. You know, yeah. We're, our yeah. country is amassing way too many people for us not to learn acceptance. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, it do, we don't have to necessarily love each other, but if we can learn to listen to each other and to accept each other, I, we don't have to agree, but we can accept. I think the world would be a much happier place. That's it. It's ex- the, the, the deal of acceptance is I don't have to agree with you, but I should allow you to have your own voice. Yes. Yeah. Stop because you say it and I don't agree with it doesn't mean that I should judge you or shut you up. Totally. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. It really is at an all time low, it seems. So if somebody wanted to get involved in what like an organization, what's your one tip to tell them like here's how to here's like here's where you start? Volunteer. Volunteer. Please. Yeah. Literally pick up Google. You know, there's this thing called Google. <laughs> and it will tell you anything you need to know. Like, uh, you know, uh, animal shelters, like in Dallas, I, I were, I am a real huge advocate of Dallas street dog, street dog mm-hmm. advocates. Um, they go out into the seriously underprivileged areas and rescue animals who are beaten, chained, lost, yeah. freezing, hungry, and they bring them in and they, they, they heal them. And then they try to get them adopted. Uh, you know, just, what what is it that you want to do? There's got to be something. If yeah, you don't about care something. about anything else, if you can't find something to care about to go volunteer for, then you've got a bigger problem than you know. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And I think that a lot of those organizations, I know that like I I do child cancer, like they're everyone's like always looking for a volunteer. So if you can just Google and find a phone number, call and ask. Like everyone's happy to. So I think well, the fact that you said that is great. They freak out if they feel volunteer. That's the mm. hardest thing for them to get is volunteers. Yeah. Most nonprofits, the hardest thing to find is volunteers. Mm. So talk to us a little bit about the last question that we ask everyone is like, what are the habits or like the the things that you do in your day-to-day life to take care of you? Whether it's meditation or do you work out every day? Or like, what are the things you need to do to make you feel good? What does Leanne do to keep those spirits high? Yeah. Okay. So the first thing, first thing I will say is my, um, my favorite Bible verse is Acts 2 25. I've pitched my tent in the land of hope. I'll say it till I'm dead. That's just the truth. If you can wake up and be hopeful every day, hope gives the world meaning. Hope Mm. gives the world a chance. Hope gives the person who pissed you off yesterday, a chance not to piss you off today. 
uh, that. Uh, a little trick I learned, because I like to mess with my, uh, I, I'm one of those people that I have to learn to manipulate my mind, because if I don't, my mind will take over and manipulate me, okay? Yeah. Self, self-talk self is a real big thing. So I make my password to log into my laptop or my cell phone or my desktop, something inspirational or, um, you know, affirmational. So like, like I remember when I left the show, I made it like faith in God, faith in God. I t- every time I wanted to open that laptop, faith in God. Yeah. Faith in God. I think that's I a mean, really great little tip. I like and it. You know, Maybe it's awesome. <laughs> and you have to, you have to say it to yourself while you type it. Yeah. Believe in you. Love wins. Be kind. Mm. You're fabulous. Yeah. I mean, just think about all the opportunities that you have. You could change it weekly, monthly, and that whole week you would be basically doing affirmations for yourself. Yeah. I feel like that, like those little yeah. things are things that like no one has ever said before. So I, I think that that's really fantastic. I, Leanne, you're full of wisdom. Thank you for doing this with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You can't get to 55 without a little bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> so we know your show is um like kind of what's next for you. Is there anything else? And are you able to tell us when your show does air, where our viewers are going to be able to watch? I can't talk about it yet. Okay. But it'll be soon. Okay. Um, but honestly, I'm on Instagram most days. Um, I try and uh, respond to, I uh, try to do engagement. I really do, I swear. Uh, it just depends on what the dogs are doing and, you know, what's going on in my crazy life. Um, but in, I, I don't really go to Facebook. I don't really go to Twitter that much. But I'm on Instagram a lot. And, I and, you know, I love to share funny things in my stories to make people laugh. Oh my God, I'm in love with Iggy, the little dog that does all the dress up stuff. And when she, that dog got the RuPaul box, I was like, this shit ain't right. Like, this is so wrong. I don't want the RuPaul box. A dog got a RuPaul box. And I didn't. I, I was like, I was beside myself. I was sending it to all my gay friends, like, what the hell? <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's so good. Well, thank you. I tell you to have fun at dinner. Some Something tells me you will anyway. I will. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> this is absolutely wonderful. We appreciate the time. Thank you so Thank much, you Leanne. So this is much. fabulous. We'll talk Thanks. to you soon. Have a good one. Okay. Bye, guys. We really hope that you enjoyed that episode. You can follow me on Instagram at Wellness by Kelly. And if you're new around here, you can sign up for the WBK seven day free trial where you can get access to all of my low impact workouts, blood sugar balancing, plant based recipes, and guided meditations, all available on wellnessbykelly.com and on the WBK app. Hey, thanks for listening. Please make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. You can also connect with us on social media at Wellness by Kelly. Drop us a DM for who you want to hear from.